see how messy it looks for me. Hmm. It's Zach Two Turn here, back in action. Today is a very special day because we are starting a brand new series called, well, I forgot what I named it. 10, no, top 10 of Disney. So I'm just gonna go like different videos. We have different of my top 10s, um, kind of like attractions, dining, who knows? But today is my top 10 planning advices, advice. Top 10 planning advice. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So just in order of how I plan vacations and how I think it's kind of effective to plan vacations, but who knows? So number one, let me look at my notes here. Number one is to decide when you're traveling, obviously. You have to have a plan of when. I know some people can be flexible, but you want to book things, you have to know when. Um, so you can so you can request off work if you need to, get the kids out of school if you need to, or I don't know, just kind of go whenever you want. So once you do that, um, it is important to think about when you are going because that can kind of um, help decide like if there's special parties such as the Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party and the Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party or if there's festivals like the Flower and Garden or the Food and Wine. Um, and then like during the summer, obviously it's going to be pretty crowded because there's a lot of people are off school. It's easier to go for families and stuff and then like holidays and stuff because a lot of people have holidays off. But there really is no downtime anymore. There's no slow period, you know. It used to be like September and then like February would be like no one would be there. You could walk onto everything. That's not the case anymore. Um, people are always gonna be at Walt Disney World. Um, there's always gonna be groups. There. There's always be something going on. It's always gonna be fun, but there will always be lines. So don't go in thinking that oh, there won't be lines or just be less of lines than kind of like the summer or the holidays if you go on like the off seasons, but not off anymore, whatever. Anyway, so after that, you want to pick how you're getting there. Um, you either want to fly or you can drive. There's upsides and downsides to both of them. Well, for driving, there's really only downside for me because I hate driving and it's 15 hours from where I live. So I would never, ever do that. Um, but for some people, they like road trips. Um, well, I can't say I never, ever would drive because I drove pretty much almost every single time. But if I had a choice, like my one in March, I would rather fly. Cause I like flying, it only takes two hours, two and a half-ish hours, I guess. And then you get to ride the Magical Express if you're staying on property. It's just so much fun. But some people, it works better for them if they drive. Um, so you just gotta kinda of think about if you're driving, um, you may have to pay for parking if you're not staying on property. Um, you have to pay for gas and all sorts of stuff like that. So just kind of, if you're budgeting your, plan, um, your trip out, just kinda of think about everything like that. So once you decide like how you're getting there, we have to say, where am I going to sleep? So, Disney has a whole bunch of different hotels on property. They have value, which are kind of like, you know, um, your cheapest option. There's like Pop Century, the All Stars, and an Art of Animation. Your Moderate, which includes like Coronado Springs, my favorite. Oh, that spoils one of the videos. But, oh, well, okay. Coronado, Riverside, Port Orleans, Riverside, Port Orleans, Prince Quarter, and then Caribbean Beach, and then a whole bunch of deluxes, which are like your top tier Disney hotels, like the Polynesian, Animal Kingdom, um, and then also like your Disney Vacation Club villas. So if you want to stay on property, you have a whole bunch of choices for your budget and for your family, or you can stay off property. Um, one downside about staying off property is you don't get the Disney transportation. They might have transportation of their own, such, such as the one in the Disney Springs area. I know they do, um, and then some other ones do, but you might not. So you might have to pay to get there, um, either by car or by Uber or taxi, and then you might have to pay for, well, you would have to pay for parking if you aren't like an annual pass holder or don't have like a voucher for free parking for some reason. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. Um, I always love staying on property, number one. I wanted to ride the Disney Magical Express to start my vacation. 
I want to ride Disney transportation, even though it can take a while. Um, it's not really flexible going resort to resort. So if you have like resort dining reservations at different ones, not very flexible. You kind of have to do some maneuvering, but I just absolutely love it. Um, I don't want to think about me driving. I don't want to think about paying for like transportation or parking. I just, I'm at Disney. I want to do everything Disney. Uh, so then once you have where you're going to say, now you got to think about, hmm, how am I going to get into the park? So you have options. You can just do a base ticket, which is one park per day. You pick which park you want to go to, um, and then you pay for it. Um, so like, there's like different like seasons, um, like Magic Kingdom goes up is the highest one actually I meant to say and in the summer it's obviously gonna be more expensive just like with the holidays and then they do have like their value season which is a little bit cheaper or you can do the park hopper which you can go to one park in the morning one park in the afternoon maybe park at night do whatever you want you can park hop I love having park hopper if I didn't have an annual pass I would always buy a park hopper because at nighttime like I said in my earlier vlog I love going to Magic Kingdom at night. After the park closes, I'm not tired. I have so much Disney energy in me. I wanna go do more. So I'll go to Magic Kingdom. Or like if you wanna go to Animal Kingdom morning, have lunch, I don't know, in Epcot, and then go back to Animal Kingdom, you can do that. They have buses that go park to park. It is so simple to do. I would recommend getting a park hopper, but if it's not for your family, if you can spend a full day at Hollywood Studios in Animal Kingdom and Epcot and Magic Kingdom, do it. Save a little bit of money more power to you. I can't do that. Um, I just love, I have like a little energizer, but I just pop, pop, pop everywhere. Um, then you gotta think about if you're going to a water park. Um, I don't usually get the water park thing. I don't usually have time for the water park. I love them, but I don't really go every trip. It's kind of like a special thing if I do want to do that. But you can have that option to where you can go to the water parks if you want to on like an off day, kind of cool down, not go to park, lay out, soak in some rays, get a nice little floor to tan. So when you go home, you can say, I look nice and tan. Okay, let me look at my notes because I don't really know where I'm at yet. Okay, now you gotta think about your dining plan. So if you want, if you are staying on property and you have a ticket of some sort, either an annual pass, park hopper, whatever, you have a ticket, you can get a dining plan. There's three different options, quick service, Disney dining plan, or deluxe dining plan. So the quick service, you get two quick service meals per night of stay per person and a resort refillable mug and I believe two snacks. So you can go to like Casey's Corners, Pecos Bills, you can go to um, be our guest for breakfast or lunch. You can go over to um, the new place in Pandora. I don't know how to say it, so I'm not even gonna try to butcher that, but you can go there. You can go to the Yak and Yeti little local market. You can just do all those little counter service ones to where you don't have to make reservations for. You just walk up um, and you get your meal and a drink. And then if you want, you can use a snack for the dessert. But a lot of people, the meals are pretty big. Like they're a big portion. So a lot of people think like the dessert is a waste. I never did, but I mean, some people did. And so that gives them more flexibility. Um, and you can also get, with anything, you can get um, any meal, you can get an alcoholic beverage if you want for my 21 and up people. Um, now you have the Disney dining plan, which is one table service and one quick service. This I think would be the most popular. So you can have just a quick service during the day if you want, like while you're in the park, just kind of get food, do what you want, and then have a nice sit down dinner, kind of cool off, you know, get ready for the night action of the fireworks or the parade or whatever you want to do or some late night roller coasters, whatever you want to do. So that also comes with two snacks as well. And then for your table service, you do get um, a meal, like a, your entree, I don't know what I'm trying to say, an entree and a dessert without having to use a snack credit and a drink as well. But for the quick service meal, your counter service, you only get that entree. You don't get the dessert included anymore. Now, the deluxe dining plan. Three credits, you use wherever you want, however you want, whatever you wanna do. Use them as counter service, use them as a table service, use them as a signature, do what you want with them. They're your credits and you have three per person per night. This is what I'm doing in March, even though it is a lot of food. I'm gonna eat all of it probably. But you get, for your table service, you get an appetizer, an entree and a dessert and a drink 
yeah, that's a lot. So you get kind of more option. You can you know, get the steak, get the shrimp, get the pasta, whatever you want. You can get it. Yeah, so that's your dining plan options. So next, what you need to think about is oh, <laughs> picking your must-dos. So I always like to tell people to pick like a few things they have to do on this trip, whether it's your first time, whether it's your 10th time, whether it's your 100th time. Pick something or a few things that you have to do for this trip. For me, my one coming up in March was go to Pandora, see Happily Ever After, eat at Ohana, and eat at Jinko. Haven't been to Pandora, haven't seen Happily Ever After. Ohana's a must for every trip. Haven't been to Jinko yet. And I'm on the Lux dining plan, so why not? So it's just kind of like things like, just like have a list of like whatever your party like really, really wants to do. So like for the first time, people would probably be see the parade, see the fireworks, meet all the characters, um, just stuff like that. So just kind of keep that in mind because there's so much to do at Disney World. Like it's huge and there's not enough time to do it all. So you just gotta have somewhat of a plan when going into this. So when saying that, next would to be to book your advanced dining reservations. They open up 180 days out of your check-in day. Um, so once 180 days hits, if you have already booked everything, go ahead and start booking your dining. If you're on the dining plan, remember, if you have the Disney dining or the deluxe dining, you do need to start booking those table service meals as soon as possible because they can go out. Cinderella's Royal Table, gone easily. Ohana, gone easily. Be our guest, gone super easily. People love the new places and the fun places. So if you wanna do those, try to book 180 days out. If you can't, I'm sorry. Just kidding, no. Look like a week out, look like a day out because people are canceling their reservations all the time. You're already on your phone almost all the time or the computer. Hop on the My Disney Experience, check around a little bit. It might not be your ideal dining time, but if you want to do it, you'll make it work. Um, like when I booked a trip like only a month out, I did Ohana at like, like our check-in time was like 8.45, I think. So it was like pretty late for dinner. But the nice thing about that is we got to see the fireworks. So there are pros and cons to everything, obviously. So just try, always keep looking. Plans are always changing. Your plans might change, so... Who knows? Next, what did it mean now to book your fast passes? Um, those open up 60 days out for um, Disney Resort guests and then some of the partner um, hotels and for everyone else it's 30 days out. Now obviously for like the new Pandora ride, probably still Frozen Ever After, um, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, those are going to go out pretty pretty fast at like 60. So you want to get those if you can at 60 days out. The rest of them, like what am I trying to say? Planning wise, it might be better to do 60 days out, but most attractions are still going to have fast passes available a few days before. So don't stress too much if you don't have the fast pass you want yet, because those are also always opening up. They always are like holding some back for the day of, well, I don't know for sure, but I think they do hold some back for the day because I always find times that I want and when I want. A tip also would be book them in like the morning-ish time. So that way you can use all three of those and then book another one for the afternoon in a different park if you want. And then once you use that, book another one. It is so awesome. You can just keep booking them, keep on checking your, um, you know, your little My Disney experience. Have a portable charger. Fuel routes are great because you'll be using your phone a lot. Um, if you like to disconnect on vacation, mm, it is a little bit harder to do this obviously. So you would want to go in about 60 days out, have your plan, print out everything, but if not, um, you can always go to the kiosk, you can go to guest um, relations, they'll be able to help you a lot as well with all that. So now we've booked our dining, we've booked our fast pass, and now we gotta think about though, does your party need a midday nap or like a pool time? I never do, like I said, I'm the Energizer Bunny, I could go from 7 a.m. to midnight in Disney World, wake up at six, do it all over again. I don't need a nap, but, some people do if like they have little kids, um, they have like a medical issue to where they can't be on their feet a lot because like you walk miles upon miles upon miles in Disney World. Or they just you know, don't want to be at the parks during the afternoon because those are like the craziest time, it's the hottest time. Understandable. So you can go back to the pool, you can go back, take a nap, kick your feet up, watch some TV, watch a Disney movie. I don't know, 
Do whatever you want. Or another thing you could do is find rides that you don't find thrilling and take a little nap on those. Some naps I've taken, Carousel Progress, The People Mover, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor, Bugs Life, or It's Tough to Be a Bug, whatever that is. Um, the Beauty and the Beast Show. I don't always take naps on these rides, but if I need to, these are some good, Spaceship Earth is a perfect one. They're, most of them are air conditioned. Most of them are about longer than five minutes, just a little, you know, nap. Then you're good. Re rejuvenize, rejuvenize, whatever, however you say that word. And you're good to go. But like I said, you just gotta kind of think about that too. Um, especially if like you have a dinner at like a nicer place that you want to get dressed up for, you might need to go back a little early. So just kind of plan for those out. You know, little kiddos, they can only sleep in a stroller for so long without getting cranky. They might need a nice little bed to um, take their little snooze on. Okay, so now let me make sure I got everything. Except for my last one, obviously, because it is the most important one. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so my last one would to be have fun while you're there, before you're there, after you're there. Disney is a trip of a lifetime every single time, whether you're going with a loved one, whether you're going with friends, whether you're going by yourself. It is the best time every single time if you make it the best time. Just enjoy yourself, enjoy being there, make those memories that you literally cannot make anywhere else like that. Where else could you stand in front of a castle with your family? Where else could you meet Mickey Mouse? Where else can you meet princess? Where else could you feel like a princess or a prince? Nowhere, literally only Disney. So whatever you do, just go and have fun. Some people love to overplane, some people just like to go by the seat of your pants. Either way, you're gonna have fun. Some, just do what you want and just have a great time because Disney is literally the best place ever um, and just so much fun. So anyway, that wraps up my top 10 planning trip advices. Um, I, I don't even know what I just said. My top 10, <laughs> my top 10 planning tips there we go for today um like i said this is going to be i don't really have like a set day for this but there will be a lot more coming out um one because i'm bored two because i don't have anything to do before my trip really um except go to class and go to work um three i annoy a lot of people i'm around by talking about disney so much so i might as well annoy the internet as well and four because it's fun and i want to yeah I don't know anyway so i hope you have a great rest of your um time maybe comment some advice that you might have um how you kind of plan what's your style remember to like and subscribe and then i will see you all in my next video have a great rest of your day